First of all, my questions to Gareth. Gareth, here we are on the eve of another semi-final. The public is saying your teams are as unpredictable as Pep Guardiola, but you have the faith of a nation. How does that sound? Well, we're very excited about the game, that's for sure. Um, and we know that we're going to have tremendous support throughout the country, so it's a, that's a great feeling for us. I think we're uh, ready for the game. I think the players are ready. They've got tremendous experience now themselves, having been in this situation before. So I think our preparation's been calm, and um, we know we're playing a really good opponent. Uh, we, we, we knew that before the autumn. We knew even more so after the games in the autumn. Um, so it's going to be a really, really tight game, I think, and uh, a, a, I think an exciting game for everybody. Um, also, um, Saka was injured for the last encounter. Can you give us a full update of your squad? And you have an option now of a back four or back three after such a convincing win. How big a dilemma is it whether you change tactics, how you evolve this side once again, or could you actually keep the same team? <laughs> Well, we've got at the moment we've got everybody available. We've just, we have got one or two checks to make tonight. Um, in terms of the system, uh, I think over the last three years we've always been flexible with our tactical approach. Um, we always have to try to pick the right approach for the opponent. Denmark have been changing during matches, so they've got real uh, fluidity with their selection. And uh, we'll have to be aware of that during the game. I think the players are, are aware of that. And we've got players that make good decisions on the field now. They've got experience of coming up against different systems. Um, they know how to um, counter those systems and they know where to find the spaces. So it's, um, it's great because we've been working together for a, quite a long time now that we, we understand our own patterns of play. And... Um, it means that there's a consistency in the way that we operate, really. Harry, there's going to be extra fans in there, the greatest stadium capacity we've seen since the start of this pandemic. What do you hear in that dressing room? And we know in the past, and Pep Guardiola meant it as a compliment when he talked of a Harry Kane team, but I want, to t want you to tell me what you see in that dressing room, position for p position, the men going out in this semi-final and their capability of booking a place in a final? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously we've got a fantastic squad, uh, not just the team that play, everyone who's involved, everyone who's been with us throughout the journey. Um, and obviously we've had great clean sheets in this tournament. Uh, our aim is to try and get another one tomorrow night, of course. Uh, we've got great options all over the pitch. Uh, we've got great competition for places all over the pitch. So um, it gives the, the manager a great headache to have and uh, whoever's called upon on the day will, will go out there and do a job for the team. So, um, I mean, like I said before, this tournament, we have a, a very strong squad, but it's about performing on, on the match days. And um, obviously there's a lot of talk going into this semi-final and uh, it's a chance for us to obviously go one step further than what we did in Russia in 2018. So it's a great opportunity for us to, to go, and, uh, go and achieve that. Caspers Michael says he has the greatest respect for you. There's nothing that he can teach his teammates about coming up against you because everyone knows what a world-class striker you are. But he was asked what he felt of us singing It's Coming Home in England. And he said, well, it hasn't. You've never won the European Championship, Harry. What's your response to that? Yeah, well, obviously, we have a, a great opportunity to do it uh, this year. Um, we're not taking Denmark lightly uh, by any means. We know they're a very tough team. They've got some great players, and they're obviously a great unit of a team as well. So, um, yeah, like, he's right in terms of that. It, ha it hasn't come home in this competition for us. But, um, yeah, we're in a great position where we're two games away. So uh, it's important that our focus is on tomorrow night and about us and what we can do. Um, and we know if we can get it right, then it, um, it should be enough to, to get us over the line. A question both to you and, and to Gareth for me to finish. You, you will put a special presentation, a shirt that you're going to hand over to, to Christian. For you personally, what will that mean, that he won't be in the stadium with you, that he's not with his team in the training ground? And, and Gareth, why was that important for England to send that message? Yeah, obviously, um, 
I'm good friends with Chris and um, yeah, of course it would be sad to not see him there. He's a big part of their success over the, over the years and um, of course it was a, a terrible thing that, that happened to him. The main thing is that, that he's doing well and he's uh, obviously recovering well um, and I'm sure he'll be rooting for Denmark more than he'll be rooting for me for sure. So. Um, yeah, of course, there'll be a presentation just to, to show our support from, obviously, all of us uh, here at England. Um, but, of course, yeah, uh, it would be a shame that, that he's not there with, uh, with his team. Yeah, I think yeah. on behalf of all of us, we, uh, we obviously were watching um, when, when it all happened and unfolded. And I, I think everybody was moved and worried and anxious about what we were seeing. So it's brilliant to hear that he's recovering well. And um, I think given the fact as well, he, he played in England and was, was such an impressive player and person in the Premier League, um, I think even more so we wanted to have that recognition for him and his family. Thanks, Kerry. Uh, next to Simon Peach, Press Association. Good evening. Uh, firstly, good luck tomorrow. Uh, it's just a quick one on the back of a Casper Hillman's press conference. He suggested that the, uh, there's a lot of pressure on England, that, that, that it's an a situation they could take advantage of, having so many fans here, but also that expectation. Just wondered how you do deal with that, because that, that obviously is a thing that you, you are having to deal with. Well, I mean, we've had expectation during the whole tournament, and... Um... I think we've dealt with that really well in the opening game, for example, and uh, in the game with Germany. But we've never been to a final, so the the pressure is what you choose it to be, really. I think it's a motivating thing. It's a challenge for us. Um, if we were a country that had won five titles and you know we, we had to match what had gone before, it might feel differently, but um, we're not. Um, Denmark have won it, so maybe there's more pressure on Denmark to replicate that, but it's not the way we've, we're viewing the game. Um, we know it's about performing on the day. We know that we've got to prepare in the best possible way, and we, we believe we have. It's a quick turnaround between the matches, um, and two very good teams, so we're, we're looking forward to the game. And just a quick question for Harry on a similar theme. How how much are you feeling the weight of expectation heading into this match and are you embracing it and enjoying it? Yeah, I think uh, whenever you're an England player stepping out in, into a major tournament, every game is a high-pressure situation. I spoke uh, after the Germany game about the pressure that was on us as a team to perform and the expectation, and we come through that well. And then, uh, of course, the Ukraine game, uh, the further you go, uh, obviously, we was expected to win that game, but you still have to go out there and perform un under that pressure. So um, it's part and parcel of, of major tournament football. Uh, obviously, a lot of us have uh, been dealing with it at club level as well in Champions League finals, semi-finals, uh, cup finals. So um, yeah, the squad's obviously uh, probably more experienced than what it was back in 2018. So um, it's a chance for us to, to go out there and prove it. We can obviously talk as much as we want, but the bottom line is we've got to go out there and perform and um, yeah, we've got to go and be free tomorrow night and enjoy it, but of course have a real focus on, on um, trying to get through to the final. Thanks Simon. Alex Howell, BBC Sport. Uh, this one's for Gareth. Hi Gareth. Um, with the Nations League and the World Cup, this is the third semi-final in three years. Is it getting more normal to prepare for these occasions? Well, it's, it definitely feels um, different this time in that the, the first time around um, the, the World Cup was a very emotional journey for us. We hadn't won a knockout game for 10 years or something like that. And the, the, evening, the night with Colombia where we won that knockout game, we won a penalty shootout, was highly emotional. Then we had the quarterfinal with Sweden, which again first time in a semi-final for 35 years or whatever so um, it was um, it has felt different this time um, in that we're expect we expected ourselves to get to this point we've had that internal aim um, but we've been you know not celebrating the victories in quite the same way we've um, 
moved on to the next challenge quickly and it was the same after the game in Rome. Um, important that we acknowledge our fans out there who were brilliant and it was great to see the number of fans that we had in the stadium. But our focus was very quickly on, on the game uh, against Denmark. Thank you. And just one for Harry, please. Um, the former Denmark manager compared you to Cristiano Ronaldo, the level of your finishing. Just wondering what you made of that. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's high praise to obviously receive. Uh, I've spoke before about Ronaldo and, and Messi and, and the way they took football to almost another level in terms of their goal scoring ability and, and their performances year in, year out. So um, whenever you're mentioned in the in the same breath as, as one of those, it, it means you're doing something well. So, um, yeah, of course, I appreciate that. And uh, that would only give me uh, more confidence going forward. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Lars Klaus, BT Sport. Yes, thank you. My question is for uh, Harry Kane. Hi, Harry. Um, Christian Eriksen has been invited to uh, Wembley on uh, Sunday by uh, UEFA today. What would it mean to you if you could... Uh, have a chance to uh, see Christian and say uh, hello after what uh, what uh, happened early on the tournament. Yeah, no, of course. I said to um, I said early after it after it happened. Um, of course, I texted him and wished him well. But um, yeah, I look forward to seeing him and, and catching up with him. So um, of course, it'd be nice if if England are playing in the final and um, I can catch up with him after hopefully a happy day. But um, no, of course, you know, like I said, I'm. Good friends with Christian and and his his family as well. So um, yeah, whether he decides to to come or not, um, of course I hope to to catch up with him soon. And um, like I say, from from my point of view, I'm just glad that that he's recovering well and um, just hope he continues on that path and, and until we do uh, until we do meet again. All right, and one last question for you too, uh, Harry. How much have you been uh, texting with uh, Christian and maybe his uh, family since uh, since the game against uh, Finland in uh, in Copenhagen? Yeah, I mean, I texted him uh, after it happened. Um, he texted me back, obviously, a, a few days later. Um, just a, a quick message. Uh, I know, him, obviously, my wife is, is friends with his wife as well, so I know they've been in contact. So. Um, yeah, of course, it's, it's a lot. A lot has happened for him and, and his family as well. So, um, yeah, I don't want to bombard him with, with messages. Uh, he knows um, he's got a place in, in my heart and obviously all, all of our hearts um, around the footballing world. So, um, yeah, it's important that he just rests and recovers now, not just physically but mentally as well. Obviously, it was a, a big, uh, a challenging time that he went through. So. Um, like I said, I hope to catch up with him uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Next to Patrick Stroddle Peterson, TV2. Yeah, thanks a lot. Question for uh, for you, Harry Kane. Uh, well, you did not manage to <clears throat> sorry to to beat Denmark in the Nations League in the two games you played against them. Sorry, dropped off there. If you can re-raise your hand, we'll bring you back in. Uh, we'll briefly go to Jack Pitbrook of the Athletic next. That left foot volley that you hit in the Ukraine game that forced the corner that Henderson scored from, is that the kind of thing that you would only take on and go for if you're feeling confident and on top of your game? Um, no, not really, yeah, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't need a second invitation to shoot, that's for sure. Um, I'd always do what I feel is best for, for the team on the pitch at, at the right time. So um, I've said before, I'm always confident in, in my ability to score and and to hit the target uh, the majority of the time. So, um, yeah, whether I've scored or not scored, um, I've always said the next opportunity is the, the most important one. So, um, yeah, it was, it was obviously a nice contact. Keeper made a good saves, but uh, thankfully Jordan uh, managed to get his goal uh, from, the, from the resulting corner. And just a quick one for Gareth. Um, Gareth, after five games, five clean sheets, it feels like everything's gone more or less to plan on the pitch so far. Are you at all worried, or what have you done to help the players in case something does finally not go to plan tomorrow night, whether it's a goal conceded or a red card or something like that? Yeah, we're, we're always uh, talking about those sorts of situations, and um, um, uh, not everything has gone to plan, that's for certain, but um, we, uh, we do talk those things through because you have to stay calm in those situations, and We've been in those sorts of situations before. We've had to deal with goals conceded. We've had to be deal with late 
equalisers or uh, going back to when we played in Scotland a, a few years ago, 1-0 up with five minutes to go, 2-1 down with two minutes to go. So the team are resilient in those moments. They know they have to stay calm. Um, our first game in the World Cup, we won in the 90, 91st minute, I think, and we'd talked about it then. So you do have to come through all those things as a team on the journey to winning something. And um, I think uh, the core group of our players have been through that and they understand how we need to be in those moments. Thanks, Jack. Patrick at TV2, we're back with you now. Yeah, thanks a lot. Let's try again. Question for Harry Kane. Um, you did not manage to uh, beat Denmark in the Nations League in the last two meetings you've had against them. What do you fear most about the Danes? Is it the togetherness, the team spirit also after what happened to Christian Eriksen or is it some actual, actual strengths uh, on the pitch? Yeah, I mean, um, like I've said before, they're, they're a great team. They have some great individual players, but I think their biggest strength is it's them as a whole. Um, their technical ability, their mentality as a, as a team. Um, they're, they're a tough side to, to break down. And um, yeah, they don't concede many goals. They don't, uh, they almost, they score in a lot of games. So um, yeah, they, they pose a lot of uh, good qualities. Um, but of course, obviously, the two games in the Nations League were difficult. Uh, we were down to 10 men in one of those games, which, which made that game really difficult from, from our point of view. Uh, but we, we played well after that and we re reacted well after that. We just didn't have enough to, to obviously get a result on, on that evening. So uh, that's stuff we can learn from and uh, hopefully adapt from. Um, so, yeah, like we said, we're, we're expecting a tough game. Uh, but we have enough belief in, in this squad and enough ability in this squad that we feel if we get it right on the night, then, then we should be, able to, uh, should be able to win. Also a question for, for Gareth Southgate. Well, obviously, you've had a bad experience at Wembley at a Euro semi. Um, how much of a revenge is it for you tomorrow to go back there and maybe could bring your team to a final? Uh, it's not about uh, what it is for me. It's about what it is for the players, all of the staff, and um, and for our country. So um, we uh, don't have as good a football history as uh, we, we like to believe sometimes. And um, these players are, are making massive strides um, and breaking barriers all the time. And we've broken barriers in this tournament, and we have another opportunity to do that tomorrow. We've never been to a... Uh, a European Championship final, so we can be the first, which is really exciting for everybody. Um, we, we, we respect the Danes. I obviously am old enough to remember them winning it and uh, watch that tournament. And uh, I watched them going back to the World Cup in 1986 was the first Danish team I remember with Preben Elkjar and uh, Laudrup and uh, Soren Lerbu and uh, Jesper Olsen. So, I've always been a fan of the, the players that Denmark have produced. I think their football is uh, um, incredible, the, the individual players, but also the teams they've produced for, for the size of the population that they have. So I have some good friends there in, uh, uh, involved in football in Denmark, and um, I, I have great respect for their, for their system. Thanks, Patrick. Uh, James Robson, Evening Standard. Hi, Gareth. Um, you, you, this is obviously a very young squad you've, you've got here, and you've, you've talked about uh, this, this being a process. But um, at the same time, this is now back-to-back -back, um, semi-finals, three semi-finals even. I wonder what that balance is with you uh, on, on two fronts, really. On the one hand, you know, uh, is this just the start and there's better to come that we should be expecting? But also getting into the players that these chances don't come along very often, despite what, what's happened in the past few years. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I think we believe that um, this squad can get even stronger as um, as they gain even more experience. But you can never determine in tournaments how things are going to play out. You know, there are lots of random events that happen in tournaments, and um, when you get to the latter stages, you recognise that these are the moments you have to capitalise on. So we we. English football in terms of the young players that are being produced by our, our academies and the experiences they're having, the success of our junior teams is, is breeding confidence and the young players that are here, it's great for them to experience a successful 
run in a tournament where you know they're, they're going to realise that for them will be the benchmark and it'll, that should inspire them in the future as well. But for this team, you probably you never get the same group of players together again. That's the way it works. So for, for this particular team, this is this is their opportunity, our opportunity, and we want to make the most of that. When you took over, um, we, we know the, the state of England were in at the time after the last Euros. Did you did you believe that you could be a trophy winning manager with with England? You know, you've spoken just a few moments about. about uh, we think our record's better than it is, you know, or think we've been a better team than we have been in, in reality. So anyone coming into that job to actually believe you could win a trophy as an England manager, that a lot of people probably think you're out of your mind, really. Yeah, I think so we've, did you? we've always tried to build step by step because you can, you can talk about winning things, but until the team have evidence of what's possible, then it's hollow, really. And at the start, how could we really have confidence in what we might do in Russia, for example, when we hadn't been regularly beating any of the top teams. We, we had lost away in France before that. We'd, we'd lost to Germany um, in, in the friendlies. Um, so the evidence wasn't there to, to build genuine confidence. You always have hope because you've got good players, but um, there, were, there were a lot of hurdles to overcome. This team now have the experience of Russia, and since then, wins in Spain, a win against Germany the other week, a win against Belgium in the Nations League. So we're getting more consistent in those big matches and, and therefore there is more evidence and, and more belief. And we know that there's still a step to go to be uh, consistently beating those top teams and going on the sort of run that you know Denmark have only lost to Belgium and the game with Finland, which was obviously a unique experience in the last couple of years. Italy are on a phenomenal run, Spain are uh, on a tremendous run. So, you know, to, to win things and to be at the top level, you've got to be winning those games and winning them consistently, and that's, that's got to be our continuing aim. Thanks, James. Martin Schmidt, bold.dk. Thank you very much. First, a question for Gareth. Um, Denmark has played several different formations during the tournament, and they have changed quite successfully during games. Um, what do you make of the coach, Kasper Juhlmann, in terms of tactical abilities and him as a coach in general? Yeah, well, I, I knew about him before he got the job because he's work at North Zealand and, uh, of course, he's big friends with Thomas Frank, who uh, who has d done a brilliant job here at Brentford. Um, so we, I, I knew that... Uh, his teams were always tactically adaptable, and they've done that in this tournament, not only from match to match, but during the matches as well. And they have uh, versatile players to be able to do that. Obviously, Andreas Christensen is the main one who's been involved in those tactical changes. So um, that's that's modern football now. You know, that's high-level football. It's uh, teams. You, you write a formation down at the beginning of the game, but teams are rarely in that formation uh, with or without the ball. You know, they uh, they press aggressively, they go man for man in situations, they build in different patterns, and uh, players now are, are far more adaptable than years ago in in all countries. I think. Thank you. Yes, and a quick one for Harry as well. Um, obviously, you know Pierre Emil Hoybier really well, and he praised you a lot at the Danish press conference uh, a while ago. So I would like to ask you, uh, what can you say about him as a player, and and what development have you seen from him? Yeah, no, Pierre is a, a great player, um, a great leader in, in our team, obviously at club level as well. So uh, he's been great ever since he's come to the club. Uh, he's, he's a real good voice, real good vocal uh, person you can talk to uh, on and off the pitch. So, um, and obviously his qualities on the pitch show for themselves. He's, uh, he breaks up the game really well. He's great on the ball. So, um, yeah, of course we, we know each other well. I'm sure we'll, we'll have a good battle tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, overall I think he's, uh, he's a great player. And obviously uh, it's been great to play with him over the, uh, the last year or so. Thanks, Martin. We've got time for two more, starting with James Olley, ESPN. Hi to you both. A question for Gareth. Um, in, in the analysis that you've done, looking at the semi-final against Croatia in 2018 and then in the Nations League against Holland, is there anything that you think the team needs to do differently to actually take that next step and, and get to a final? 
Well, two very different experiences for us, really. Um, the Croatia game, obviously, the furthest we'd been. And um, I think we would acknowledge that we, we could have made changes during that game to, to improve the situation. But equally, we, we weren't as brave with the ball once we'd gone ahead. You know, we went ahead so early in the game. And um, so I think the tournament played out differently for us. Fatigue became a factor definitely in the, in the second half. We'd had extra time um, in, in one of our matches prior to that, and we'd had a very consistent team. So we're, we're in a slightly different place in terms of the depth of the squad and the strength of the squad now. And the game with Holland, again, was bizarre for us because we had eight boys, in the, I think, in the Champions League final three days before the game. So our preparation for that was really all over the place and uh, was, uh, again, with that game, very tight. We were half a... Half of Jesse Lingard's foot away from being 2-1 up with um, with eight minutes to play, and uh, we, we made errors through fatigue and extra time. So they were two different experiences, but it's given us the understanding of preparing for those big matches and what they feel like. And um, I think that's part of the journey. Sometimes teams have to go through. I remember Germany got to a couple of semi-finals before they finally cracked it, and. That's got to be our aim now as, as a team. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, James. And we'll finish with Paul Ferdinand from Extra Bladet. Uh, yes, hello. And this question is for Harry Kane. Um, you have a particularly good track record, uh, even for you, against Casper Schmeichel when playing Leicester in the Premier League. Is that something you can take into tomorrow's game? Um, no, I don't think so. I think um, every game is different, obviously. Totally different environment, totally different uh, team from from his point of view as well. So, um, yeah, for me, whoever whoever's in goal, whoever I'm playing against, I'd always uh, back myself first and foremost. So, um, yeah, sometimes as a player, you just have you have teams or you have uh, yeah moments where you're scoring against one individual or, or one team in particular, but. Um, yeah, from my point of view, it's not something I think about too much. Obviously, like I said, it's a, a different game, a totally different situation. Um, hopefully, from my point of view, I can carry carry that on and score a couple more. Um, but yeah, of course, I'm just focused on, on doing my job for the team, and, and hopefully that's enough to, to get us through. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. We'll conclude the media conference there. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you.